What's up everyone, how you doing? I'm gonna do this video about nasty people, but it's not really about people who intend to be nasty or people who are bad people per se. But I guess the subject that I wanted to tackle here was how do we live our lives happily with when we're exposed to misery or rather miserable people? Whether it be our family, our friends, our co-workers, everywhere we go there are people who seem to be upset about things, people who seem to be um, constantly complaining about things, um, some people are just always sick or making themselves sick because of their mental attitudes, some people are uh, uh, just mean really well but they're working towards the wrong goals or maybe harming, you know, harming their fellow man because of their actions or choices, uh, but not even realizing this is happening. This is something that I think we're all exposed to daily. I'm going to be kind of doing things while I'm making this video, so don't... I'm not going anywhere. Um, the reason why I wanted to talk about this is just because it's something that's been on the top of my mind for quite a while now. And I haven't really... like so many things that I make videos about, it pops into my head, but... I don't know how to word it or really even know what I want to talk about as far as the subject of people and dealing with people, but, um, <laughs> it's such an important issue that we need to cover constantly, but it's something that each one of you deal with in your daily life, so you don't need me to sit here and tell you, hey, people can be nasty. Um, I mean, this is just kind of a given, you know, we, we just accept it, that we're going to meet people like this. Um, and the one thing that really stands out for me that I remember is to not allow the fact that people are uh, upset to let me judge or dictate the assumption of how I think that the person is in their daily life. In other words, if I meet someone, they seem to be a jerk the first time. First impressions mean a lot, but uh, you might get to know a person a little better and realize you had a misunderstanding about them. Um, and I think that that little key part right there is how we're going to get over many of our differences is through understanding, if that makes sense. So what I'm saying basically is that we don't have to wait for people to change or act the way we want them to act or behave the way that we expect them to behave or share our values or our religion or our political views but rather have the understanding to accept that the views that the person holds are there because they think that that's what's best. Um, for example, I have a friend who is a hardcore uh, Republican, or he associated himself as a Republican. <coughs> and uh, years ago, we would have arguments, whether it be on the phone or through text message or whatnot, uh, usually when he was drunk, <laughs> and uh, you know he'd send some random thing like, "How could you vote for Obama? He doesn't even have a birth certificate, let's say, or something like that." Now, it was a, that's a perfect example because that's the kind of stuff you hear people say where you just blow them off, like a person you, who's complaining who you've never met, who's talking, you know, saying something political that you don't agree with. Maybe uh, it's usually not even worth it to argue with them, but when it's with a friend you want them to understand that, hey, things aren't always as they appear. But, more importantly, and this is where I'm getting here, th this friend of mine, he, he has a really good heart. He's, a, he's like the, one of the nicest, sweetest guys that I know in my life, of friends of mine. I mean, he, he'd do anything. He's, he's just a totally giving, kind person. Uh, but when he went through a period of, you know, drug and alcohol abuse, I guess it wasn't really, um, like, he, when he was drinking, he was just horrible. He would say things he didn't even remember. But his political views were based on what he thought was right. And he, he was extremely right-wing, like, totally against all socialism, all, you know, using libtard and things like that. Now, I'm not a liberal. I'm not a Republican. I'm not a conservative or a Democrat or any of this. I, I'm just a human, okay? I don't associate myself with a particular group in politics or in religion. And these two points, because I made the video yesterday about politics and religion, and I guess I just realized this when I just said it, was that by not drawing conclusions in either one of those arenas, 
I live a much happier life. Not only do I not have to prove what I believe to other people, but I don't try to disprove what they believe. If a person brings irrational discussion to the table, I'm willing to say, wow, that's amazing, maybe I was wrong about that, or you know, something like that. But I've been so stubborn in the past, I grew up as a very stubborn, independent type of guy where, hey, this is my attitude, this is how I feel, this is, you know, tough shit. And, and I still carry that with me sometimes about certain things. And I get misunderstood um, by, say, um, for example, I, you know, talking to my mom a while back, and I was telling her I just don't care about the petty shit anymore, like trivial conversation or, um, or certain particular subjects. And, and, I, and when I, I realize I came across as just being like, when I say you don't say I don't care, that attitude is just like, I don't give a shit about anything. It's kind of the attitude that it comes across, and that comes from my youth. I bring that with me, with my arrogance, and something that I'm aware of and that I try to, you know, conquer. But I don't mean it the way it comes out. It's just that the way I'm interpreted, as if I don't care, but what I really mean is to say that... Uh, that I've already sifted through all these particular things in, and I've looked into them and spent too much time already and I don't want to waste any more time worrying about it. Um, a good example would be talking with people online about conspiracies and such. Um, if I just say, hey, it's a waste of time to worry about, you know, who did 9-11, let's say, or any of the, you know, it doesn't matter whether it was a conspiracy or not at this point. Anybody who's spending time doing research on it is just wasting time. So, but me saying that has led people to say, "Well, you're just you're just asleep. You're not aware, awake, of, and aware of what's going on." When in fact, I've actually spent like countless, countless hours of my life, you know, doing what they call research. And uh, starting back in the mid '90s with the internet, you know, I realized at a point, okay, the internet's huge. All the information's there, and then you start to really understand it. You know, almost uh, 20 years later, the internet has become a place where you can finally see what stuff is just made up for ads and for BS or for business or which people are just trying to get views or which people are just trying to cause problems. Um, and so, <laughs> kind of to, to segue back into, I guess, this whole thing about people and, and, and judging people. Um, we misunderstand people's points of view because we're, let's picture, I picture this big jewel, you know, a multifaceted jewel. I guess this would be the best way to do it. Because I always say that, you know, each person's standing on a facet. And you can see some of the facets around you just because of your height, but you can never see the whole circumference. There's no way to see the entirety of the picture. We as humans cannot grasp the entirety of why things are the way they are. So it's easy for us to wrap up into our little ball, just kind of say this is the way I believe and screw you. But realizing that you'll never see all the facets means you'll never understand all the points of view. Once in a while, we jump to a different facet and somebody jumps onto our facet. So here's another person who's maybe into something I was in two years ago and maybe I've moved into something they were in two years ago. But it's a mistake to say, oh, I've been where you are, you'll see one day. Because that's the attitude you can't have. That because you think one thing and a person thinks another, that the person's beneath you or somehow inferior. Unless they're obviously ignorant and they're not paying attention to anything. But uh, this person, let's say they're completely ignorant to the fact that they've been lied to by their government, that they're taking, being taken advantage by, of by corporations, that they've just closed their eyes, their ears, their mouth, everything, just go along in life and just be blind. And then one day realize it, that they've been lied to, and choose to ignore it. Um, willful ignorance, if you will. Uh, this is something that's pretty common as well, and I guess that's a different side of it that does need to be addressed. Some people really just don't seem to care about anything, but it's nobody's place to tell them they should. In other words, I've had people, like, let's say, get angry because uh, they say, you should speak out on your videos about this or that. Um, one guy, you know, people have said, let's say back at the Fukushima, a couple people said, you should speak up about radiation in Fukushima and how the world's going to end and the oceans are all poisoned. And I said, well, I'm not going to jump the gun on this because I don't really think that it's as bad as you're making it out to be in the long run. And then they'd get angry at me and say, you're just asleep, you're not paying attention. Well, you know, I'm, I'm a slightly vindicated years later now when things like Chernobyl are, have shown what can really happen after a nuclear disaster like that. Um, 
I'm not saying that it's a good thing, don't get me wrong. What I'm saying is that the people who covered that are people who are moved or have been exposed to radiation sickness, perhaps, or somebody in their, in their life had died from it, or maybe they just, you know, had a strong urge to speak out against that. Just like people who are against domestic abuse or spousal violence because maybe they were beaten or someone they, they knew was or their parents were, um, or against child abuse because they were abused as a child, or somebody who's out there trying to uh, protect the environment because their local environment was ruined and their water was, you know, they could light their tap water on fire. Um, or there was an oil spill, so they become an environmentalist. The reasons why people speak out and they are so adamant about, you know, fighting towards certain things and their passions are due to the experiences that we've had as individuals. And the same thing happens with the passions that, not only the passions we have, but the negative things or things that turn us off, maybe our trigger words, or things that upset us or bother us. Um, <clears throat> So, this is really kind of the crux of the, of the point, would be my, my whole discussion here, was, is that those triggers, the things that trigger you, that upset you, when you have a discussion with someone that, whether you know them well or not, and you just don't seem to be getting along, or you seem to be clashing, um, you start to ask yourself, what is it exactly that, you know, uh, that upsets me, if you get upset? Because this is really key, our hearts, our hearts, our stomachs, you know, the butterflies in the stomach, it tells us when we're doing something wrong or feeling, uh, you know, for example, I get angry sometimes, but I don't feel angry. In other words, I should say I can use an angry type voice when I have to convey an important message to my kids. Because this is really hard for me because I'm very easygoing on my children and I never raise my voice unless I, I'm either really frustrated or I feel like they're in danger. And when I do, I can quickly revert back to being, you know, totally normal. In the past, when I would yell at someone, like if I got in an argument, let's say, with somebody, I would feel angry about it for like maybe a couple hours. The internet's a good example. Uh, people in the past who I would go back and just have to leave a page long comment about how wrong they were because they said something that was obviously not true. Uh, There's a few people who were, you know, totally trolls. I mean, back in the day, I actually bought into it, you know? And I look back and laugh and think, you know, there's a point in life where you realize that what we're here to do in a conversation is to present our discussion and our true opinion. We don't sugarcoat it to avoid confrontation, but we don't make it sound worse than it is so we can try to get one up on another person. Uh, if you've ever been in an argument and found yourself um, playing, if you will, the devil's advocate and like uh, actually arguing against someone's point even though you agree with the point just to make that point and say hey well the other side is this um, that's really important too so we're not hiding the what-ifs we're asking ourselves as individuals you know is this true now these are all important points to me because a good and you know the Aristotelian <laughs> argument if you will um, contains the ethos the pathos and the logos the three parts of a good <clears throat> of a good argument, if you will. Um, if, if you want to present something, and uh, this is, you know, you might call it propaganda, if you will. For some people, use it for propaganda, but ethos, pathos, and logos, the ethos is, is the value of the person who's presenting it. In other words, what are their credentials? Why should you believe them? The pathos, with this pathologicals derived from, uh, these pathos is the... Um, the, the um, I guess, the emotion with which you convey the message. How are you doing? Are you really up in their face? And the logos is the logos, the subject itself. The subject has to be important, or none of the other things matter, but all three of these parts have to be there. Um, looking back at these old philosophical truths, one starts to understand things a little bit clearer and see that these are enduring problems we've had when we're discussing things with others and arguing with others. And it's important for us not to get mad. You know, for example, I have discussions sometimes with my mom and she takes it very personal because I'm attacking an idea and I'm saying, I don't believe this because of this. And, and I have 
an overwhelming amount of information to show why I don't, you know, believe something, and she'll often just blow me off, like, ah, oh, whatever, you know. And, and I feel bad because she takes it personal sometimes thinking that I'm attacking her, but really it's me kind of like, you know, giving her a shove in the right direction, and, and it's kind of like not tough love, tough knowledge, if you will, but still saying, I just don't know, but this is what I think. And uh, I found that I do this a lot in life, that I come across as being maybe negative or not agreeing with people. My subscribers might notice I do that on my channel, and hey, I'm, I, I, I'm never, I never get angry at, my, at comments. If I, if I jump back in and say something, don't take a comment the wrong way, because I just love a good debate or discussion. I mean, I'm not in it for the argument. I'm in it for the learning experience. And that's why it's hard to discuss things with people who get frustrated, because I've learned how to conquer my frustration. When I get mad, I don't get mad for very long. It's instantly gone. It's out of my system. Um, emotional ones are really weird that way, you know? We, we learn how to control them. But the one thing to remember is that when you're angry, your body goes through a process of shutting down your immune system, and it shuts down your brain. The reason why is because you go into fight or flight mode, you are pumping adrenaline, your thoughts aren't as important, so your brain is restricted on because your brain uses a lot of energy. Now this is a fact. Your brain uses a lot of energy. By shutting down part of your brain, you're able to utilize that energy elsewhere in order to escape a bad situation. When we're always angry or frustrated while we're talking to somebody, we're feeling like, you know, we're not thinking clearly in the things we say we don't even know or mean half the time, so we just gotta hold our breath and say, okay, I'm not mad at the person, I'm just, I just disagree with the situation, and in the end you walk away with a good handshake and everybody's happy. So, present your arguments below. <laughs> I'll talk to y'all later.